for today. Uh, welcome, everyone. And for today's lecture, uh, I'd like to introduce our lecturer, Professor Edmund Asian Kim. And uh, I think uh, you might uh, pretty well know that uh, Dr. Kim is one of the most accomplished doctors in the field of nuclear medicine, cancer research and served as a tenured professor at MD Anders Cancer Center. So he is currently an invited professor at Seoul National University Medical School. And Dr. Kim has dedicated and still is dedicated to cancer research and training of young medical professionals in the field. And since it's not possible to fully describe all his achievements, I will shorten it and invite Professor Kim. So today, Professor Kim will deliver us a lecture regarding cross-sectional anatomy and atlas for nuclear medicine imaging. So please welcome Dr. Edmund Deishin Kim. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sir, for a nice introduction. And uh, I hope you hear me well. And I'm a radiologist, but I'm also an internist. And I like to emphasize about uh, learning uh, cross-sectional anatomy uh, to uh, most nuclear physicians who did not have a background of uh, radiology. Uh, <clears throat> I wrote a book about atlas anatomy of uh, uh, hybrid uh, imaging uh, technology about uh, five, six years ago. And this uh, second edition came out about a month ago. And the reason I wrote that book is that uh, with the continuous development of hybrid uh, imaging technology, in the last six decades, as you see on this slide, and all nuclear physicians uh, uh, should know uh, more detailed uh, cross-sectional anatomy to interpret the uh, hybrid imaging and also help uh, referring physicians. The uh, hybrid imaging has a tremendous advantage to localize uh, abnormality precisely by looking uh, anatomical landmark on CT basically, or CT or MRI at this time. And also it characterizes abnormality based on certain uh, CT or MR uh, features. So uh, uh, I want you to know about the basic things uh, rather quickly. The, when you look at a CT, you look at a morphology. CT MR basically is uh, a, a morphological study uh, in contrast to a functional study of nuclear medicine. Uh, although uh, recent all the development uh, can also point out certain part of a, a function uh, using contrast agent, but basically uh, morphology. And then uh, <coughs> We generate the CT numbers I would mention, and also we uh, use contrast agents so that uh, you have to understand the characteristic of contrast enhancement. So uh, here a, uh, you probably have heard the Hunsfield unit. Uh, Mr. Hunsfield got a Nobel Prize uh, uh, because of uh, this uh, CT development, which is not basic science, but this uh, clinical applied science, but because of uh, enormous uh, influence of uh, medical practice, he got a Nobel Prize. But as you see on this slide, uh, zero unit is uh, water, and the air is a uh, minus uh, thousand, one thousand. And they uh, are certain calcium, very dense material, has a 3,000 unit. So uh, in between, uh, you have a uh, certain fat is uh, around uh, minus 100, and then the soft tissues around uh, 50. That's what you have to um, know. And it, uh, there has been increasing uh, identification of uh, instantal lung nodule or adrenal nodule uh, because of uh, 
a, a better, better technique of CT or MRI. Basically, thin slices and fast imaging uh, makes uh, this kind of thing. So on this slide, you can see multiple nodules with uh, a different technique. Left side is a eight millimeter slice, eight millimeter. Uh, right side, two millimeter slice. At the MD Anderson, I've been working for 32 years. Uh, they now have uh, a 0 0.6 millimeter slices on all long uh, sort of a primary or metastatic cancer worker. So that when you have a very thin, uh, you can detect tiny, tiny nodule as uh, you see on this kind of things. And also uh, <clears throat> avoiding partial volume averaging, I mentioned. So uh, this uh, uh, contrast uh, enhancement uh, is also influenced by the thickness of slices. So thinner uh, 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 section slices uh, make uh, this uh, uh, film field uh, a better way. As you see on these uh, uh, things, uh, there's a 20 Hume's field. But when you make a thin slice, it's a zero slice. This is called pseudo enhancement because of uh, overlying sort of a density, uh, partial volume averaging, we call it. So there is a lot of such a things. Uh, there's a, a, a city density also is related to uh, blood, uh, red cell, or hematocrit uh, conditions. And so uh, as you see on this slide, the anemic uh, conditions a uh, patient uh, generally makes a lower uh, uh, human speed. And so uh, there's uh, some sedimentation of hemat hemoglobin things uh, can shown on this uh, slide. You can see the line here. So uh, a certain uh, a hemorrhagic uh, rim of spleen things that you can see, the calcium things, and the... Uh, so uh, looking all these uh, things, you have to think about uh, hemorrhagic conditions on non-contrast CT. When you see high density, uh, that's uh, uh, either calcium or certain acute hemorrhage. On uh, MRI in the brain, okay, you have a uh, uh, cell site. This is a cell site in the gray matter. And between cell side, there's a xyrus. There's a xyrus, xyrus. Okay. Uh, and the uh, sort of a parietal, this uh, area here, this is called central sulcus center. So the in, in, uh, front of the central sulcus is called the motor uh, cortex, motor cortex. And uh, behind the central sulcus is a sensory, sensory cortex. So, uh, uh, when you do a uh, PET scan with uh, uh, radio labeled water, you, and then uh, uh, you can also uh, uh, exercise or make uh, some kind of a stimulus sensory, you can expect to see some increased activity in this either motor cortex or sensory cortex. So this is the anatomy you have to recognize there's under the this uh, cortex this called uh, singulate sulcus the singulate corpus okay the corpus callosum is right in the middle here under th this part uh, singulate xyrus here singular. Uh, so this corpus callosum in the midline structure in the midline structure you have also pons and medulla and the, uh, this is uh, uh, the ventricle, fourth ventricle here, and this third ventricle here, thirdly. The hypothalamus is right here, okay. P uh, pituitary gland is right here. We'll show some other pictures. The pineal gland is right here. So this, uh, uh, you have to uh, look, get, uh, okay, this part is a cortex. Uh, this is a gray matter in the bed. Is this a white matter? White matter. Okay, that junction, cortical medullary junction, that's the area in most brain tumors uh, occurs. And because of blood flow phenomena, 
the metastasis open occur in this uh, gray matter, but primary tumor is uh, in the cortical medullary junction or white matter. Okay, when you see some this non contrasted high density, as I mentioned earlier, that's uh, either calcium or hemorrhage. This is a hemorrhage, acute hemorrhage, and some depressed uh, fracture. You certainly bone window will uh, show better with uh, skull fracture than a meningeal artery usually uh, become injured. And then this concave uh, sort of a, a, a high density, uh, that's a, a epidural hematoma. This is a multiple uh, sort of a interest, uh, cerebral hematomas. And this uh, midline uh, structure, always uh, look at uh, any shift, you can have uh, uh, this kind of hemorrhage and shift. Uh, this uh, frontal horn of uh, leather ventricle shifted. Uh, so that's an important observation. Uh, in United States, when you interpret uh, PET-CT or PET-MRI, you are supposed to report any significant, clinically significant, particularly uh, some dangerous, risky, uh, uh, conditions from the CT or MRI. If you just interpret the PET scan and then later find out this kind of certain uh, very life-threatening disease, you are liable in the United States. So uh, uh, certainly, uh, you know, radiologists usually read both studies uh, uh, separately and makes uh, uh, quite a money together. Uh, but uh, even in nuclear medicine uh, uh, department, uh, you have to recognize certain uh, important diseases uh, like this. This is a, a, a concave uh, shadow of high density without contrast agent. That's a epidural hematoma. And it, <clears throat> and uh, you can have uh, this another uh, uh, hematoma in the anterior temporal on the right side. And uh, certainly this is also another uh, hematoma things. Uh, see, this kind of things, I will show you some more pictures. Uh, Arachnoid hemorrhage also show high density along the, this kind of thing. Oh, yeah, so the uh, arachnoid hemorrhage usually uh, uh, in this case, it's uh, not easy to detect the subtle finding like this uh, uh, curvy linear things. Okay, this kind of interhemispheric uh, hemorrhage, uh, some this kind of convexity is subdural, subdural, which is the most common hematoma after uh, just a general head injury, you see this kind of subdural, uh, that's a convexity. Mm. And this kind of uh, sub arachnoid hemorrhage. Okay. Uh, I will mention later, but uh, you can see a nasal cavity, oral cavity, eyeball here. Uh, this uh, petrous uh, bone, this uh, uh, this is uh, air cells uh, uh, of the inner uh, ear. Okay, here again, this kind of uh, hazy density uh, things uh, here diffuse. This uh, uh, subarachnoid hemorrhage and subdural, some kind of convexity hemorrhage uh, after it's a vision child, child. And uh, this is hydrocephalus. Uh, as you see, no, it's all ballooning type, you know, frontal horn, temporal horn, this is hydrocephalus. 
in hydrocephalus, so we already think about obstructive. That's uh, usually uh, obstructing arcadic sylvius in the fourth ventricle, uh, but pen, uh, sort of a third, the fourth, or leather ventricle all together enlargement uh, is communicating hydrocephalus, uh, including normal pressure hydrocephalus. This is diffuse hemorrhage all around the thing. Now in the MRI, uh, 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 you have uh, different signal intensities of hemorrhage. As I mentioned earlier, this is a typical uh, sub arachnoidal hemorrhage on CT. On contrast, But this is a MRI. MRI, uh, the signal intensity is depending on the stage. Okay, in the uh, uh, early just uh, we call so, uh, acute to us, acute uh, deoxyhemoglobin, yeah. but soon after a week or after three days, the deoxyhemoglobin becomes mad hemoglobin. Mad hemoglobin is a paramagnetic, uh, para paramagnetic uh, is like a, a contrast agent. So uh, it will show high signal on T1 images. T1 images usually uh, show uh, sort of a low signal intensity, but uh, this uh, matching way makes a high signal. But later, uh, chronic hematoma usually show less uh, hemosiderian ferritin. This is super paramagnetic agent. Therefore, this will uh, lose the signals. So on T1, T2, all dark signals. And so again, this infarct, other things, also depending on the stage, we have all different uh, signal intensities on different sub per sequence images. Uh, uh, we often use uh, flare imaging on the brain and also uh, uh, diffusion images. Diffusion imaging versus uh, uh, the ADC imaging uh, show opposite signals. At, uh, in usually acute uh, uh, early subacute infarct, but later it's opposite. Uh, over some point, uh, subacute it, it looks a similar uh, signal intensity. So it depends on the stage. Okay, uh, so uh, it's, uh, uh, this is the thalam, the lateral ventricle here. This is a normal shape. Okay, and midline is right here, and it, it, there's uh, some density, low density. Uh, uh, in the area of the thalamus. Uh, so that's a uh, uh, edema, it diffuses water. And that will show on this kind of, this is a, a flare imaging and the uh, flare imaging usually show high signal intensity uh, in the pathology. Uh, but the uh, uh, water, normal CSF for water uh, signal is uh, suppressed. Okay, and this is uh, due to uh, sort of a thrombosis of uh, a uh, internal cerebral vein. So internal cerebral, you see superior sagittal sinus or a top, uh, just on the inferior sagittal. Uh, internal cerebral is right in the, in the middle of brain. That's connected to straight sinus. This is a transverse sinus in the back here. Uh, the uh, so sigma is the jugular. Man. This is a venous system. So if there's any thrombosis, the edema occurs, particularly internal cerebral vein. Here. Now on CT, you can see sort of lobulated, the bumpy, uh, very high convexity here, and the enhanced. That's a classical finding of meningioma. Uh, so meningioma usually. Uh, and also enhance in this uh, 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 a, a dural uh, sort of a lining. Uh, whenever there is a nodular thing, so we measure uh, on axial images on longitudinal and the short axis, the long axis, or both. Okay, and then uh, it's so uh, depending on. Uh, different technique, this measurement may not be uh, consistent to be. So uh, it's a thin section again, it's important to measure the, the precise measurement.
And the, uh, again, this is a, uh, we call tail signs, dura enhancement, and the convexity here, uh, this is a classical meningioma. Um, it's a vascularity on angiogram studies. So this is, a, again, it is a frontal horn temporal uh, here, and this, uh, 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 yeah, you can see a uh, circus here, this is xyrus here. This is a gray matter, this is white matter. Uh, in uh, any other, you often see sort of a high, uh, just tiny spots around the white matter, that's a micro infarct or degenerative changes of the small vessel disease. And the, uh, uh, sometimes when the tumor become bigger, bigger, you often see the central necrosis or hemorrhage that will liquefy and make a cystic changes. So uh, this is a cystic meningioma, large convexity, uh, but has a, a cystic uh, due to probably all your hemorrhage things. Uh, but the, often you see just a nodular uh, enhanced lesion in the cortical medullary junction. That's a usually primary tumor and has a, a, often some aggressive tumors often have a, a marked uh, you know, uh, vasogenic edema around it. Around it. Uh, so uh, uh, certainly metastasis sometimes, so it's a, uh, uh, from imaging standpoint, uh, primary versus metastasis cannot be totally uh, you know, separated. Uh, certainly location and, and the history and uh, some um, other studies, but by just the shape, it look like uh, many times. It's not specific finding. Uh, some uh, ring enhancement uh, uh, is often uh, metastasis because uh, the periphery is a tumor, a uh, new, uh, vessel formation. So uh, usually ring shape, you have to think about the uh, metastasis first, so that's the most common. Uh, but in this case, this is a cystisarcosis here. And this is a typical glioblastoma multiforme with irregularity, some central necrosis. And this is a metastasis, you, usually a little more periphery, but this over the convexity ring shape. And this is a, a certain astrocytoma, a santo astrocytoma, pleomorphic, multi, different shape. And the, uh, it's, a, uh, it's like anaplasty, this kind of astrocytoma is a well-defined shape, shapes, uh, and some cystic changes, a slow growing tumor. And that's uh, uh, sometimes uh, we use uh, MR spectroscopy uh, to evaluate uh, uh, metabolic process using uh, MR machine and so usually choline. Choline uh, usually normally is a very low, but if there's a tumor growing, it's a cellular membrane changes uh, show on choline very high peak. And the uh, so vasogenic edema surrounding. Uh, so, but this is a relatively uh, uh, sort of a low signal intensity. So, intermediate, we call it intermediate signal intensity. Uh, this T2 showed rather uh, lower down, but contrast enhancement. So, anything mass in the central area, uh, you have to think about. Lymphoma, lymphoma. Lymphoma is usually in the center, mid, midline, midline. So uh, uh, when you consider lymphoma, always uh, you think about also a uh, toxoplasmosis uh, in Western uh, toxoplasmosis. And that's uh, uh, usually midline is showing mass, but if this is an inflammatory lesion. And then sometimes uh, uh, FTG, uh, FTG show good uptake in lymphoma, but uh, toxoplasmus is less compared. Uh, this is the caudite nucleus, thalamus, and this cortical uptake of FTG. Uh, but uh, there is a mass uh, 
uh, which is, doesn't show much uptake in, in toxoplasmosis. Certainly, uh, just a ring shape things uh, is not specific. A central location could be due to also inflammatory, other inflammatory. In this case, this uh, frontal uh, horn of leather ventricle, ventricular inflammation and cerebral abscess. This uh, choroidal plexus is right here, choroidal plexus, and that's uh, generating CSF. Uh, it's a uh, it's sort of enhanced uh, this uh, choroidal plexitis. Uh, the abscess uh, usually make an air pocket here, uh, but the surrounding edema is all you can see on MRI. So we can separate the things. Now, uh, here's a quite a, 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 a structure so you can see uh, in the uh, midline, as I said, this is a pons. The basal artery runs in front of the basal artery. And this uh, here is called cerebral aqueduct. Right behind this uh, quadrigeminal plate right here. There's a pineal gland right here, pineal gland. And the, uh, uh, this uh, is corpus callosum here. Uh, this is a, a sort of a third ventricular area, this fornis. This uh, thalamus is uh, right here, thalamus. And uh, uh, this uh, the right uh, thalamus is the right adjacent midline. And there's uh, some uh, uh, a pineal gland is uh, behind it here. There's some vein of gallon. So it's a, a pioneer, it's a midline a tumor, particularly in young 20, young people, midline is a pioneer germinoma is most common. It's an enhanced, sort of a little heterogeneous. That's the location here. Again, uh, on the sagittal images, uh, pioneer gland is right here. And this uh, uh, set of bellum here, set of bellum, fourth ventricle, third ventricle, and this uh, uh, it's, uh, this uh, pons here, this midbrain right here. Yeah, so uh, it's a midline structure. So uh, in the midline structure, just above the uh, the uh, uh, pituitary, that's. Uh, called craniopharyngioma, which is a common in, in young children, young people, right here, child, the pediatric case, mass right above. So it's a good location, makes a, uh, some differential diagnosis. So you have to describe very precisely in location, anatomically, based on CT or MRI, and then characterize abnormality based on the shape, uh, location, etc. And the uh, pituitary gland right here, uh, show sure here, is a well defined. It's a microadenoma versus a macroadenoma, uh, greater than one centimeter called macroadenoma. Macroadenoma. So uh, it's a, uh, soon after you see this kind of thing, you have to uh, check all this, uh, the hormones, you know, producing by uh, pituitary, the anterior posterior gland. And the, on the uh, midline uh, posterior cerebellum, there's a pyrocystic astrocytoma. This is another benign type, slow growing tumor, but it can also uh, go up high here. A cystic nature, that's a pyrocystic. And the, on the axia, you can see here cystic nature and the posterior fossa tumor. That's a, uh, so in the posterior fossa, mostly a pediatric case. And the medulloblastoma is, uh, uh, is uh, right in here, fourth ventricle compressing uh, midbrain and pons here, and medulloblastoma often, uh, often uh, spilled the uh, cancer cells down into spinal CSF space. So the prognosis uh, metaverse is not good generally. Yeah. Uh, another metaverse in the location 
application, <laughs> pediatric case. Ependinoma is a second common tumor in the posterior fossa here. Ependinoma. It's a little lobulated, so all enhancing. It makes it because of this archaeal surface obstructing, it makes uh, some hydrocephalus, uh, obstructive hydrocephalus. And so uh, this uh, uh, could make a tonsillar herniation. It's very dangerous by location. And so ependymoma is another type of ependymoma right here. Yeah. Uh, so uh, uh, this can block uh, a system of magna, makes obstructive. So this architect service is right here. So uh, when you see multiple, this kind of irregular, well-defined, but they also was some um, high and low signal intensity on MRI irregular, you have to think about uh, the malformation, the vascular malformation, cavernous network makes uh, this kind of shape. On CT, sometimes uh, the uh, uh, hematoma together, uh, with some soft tissue mass. So, so on this uh, diagram, on the frontal, you have an anterior okay, cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery here. This M1 segment horizontal, and then uh, here is a branching, this middle cerebral artery, which is the most commonly uh, thrombosed for stroke patient here. Yeah. So this uh, anterior communicating uh, here between the right and left anterior. And the, okay, so on this lateral sagittal corpus color, this uh, anterior uh, cerebral artery comes on and then branching, a lot of branches. Yeah, okay. So uh, it's a, uh, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, the orbital frontal, uh, and then here is a uh, pericolosal around, around superior to colossal here, and then the parietal or internal uh, frontal, this kind of branch. And the uh, on this uh, posterior circulation. Uh, well, circle of Willis, you can see uh, middle, anterior, but back here, the basal artery, basal artery. and then this uh, posterior, this we call pica, posterior, uh, okay, superior, uh, you know, the cortical, uh, cerebral artery here, and posterior, communicating. So on this uh, uh, territory, okay, my largest territory is uh, uh, by the uh, middle cerebral, the anterior, posterior. Okay, so uh, this is a middle cerebral artery territory. Okay, so when you see some uh, abnormality here, that's uh, middle cerebral artery territory here, anterior cerebral, posterior cerebral artery. Yeah, okay. Anterior way up, high up. I hope you can see. So it's uh, again, uh, this uh, some non-contrast that they show high the signal, either hemorrhage or certain uh, hematoma thrombos uh, there. But here you can see low density here uh, in sort of uh, a triangular shape that's uh, you have to think about. A certain thrombos, the right uh, middle cerebral artery territory. This is a classical uh, stroke. Uh, yeah, yeah, midline a little bit uh, now. Yeah. So uh, it's a uh, uh, right middle cerebral. So on the certain uh, the, uh, pulse sequence, you can see flare image show very nicely. All this uh, uh, high signal intensity here. And the MR uh, angiogram show up, uh, complete occlusion or uh, right side of the middle cerebral artery here. And, uh, and so again, the, the angio show compared to this kind of right, uh, left side, uh, 
M1, M2, or branch, this anterior, but the right side here, you don't see. And let's uh, uh, see this uh, uh, around the oral cavity, uvula here, uh, there's a uh, uh, tonsil, uh, the tongue base, uh, tongue. Uh, yeah, lingual tonsils here, palatine tonsils uh, on both sides. And this uh, pharynx here, this uh, I will tell you later, this, uh, uh, this uh, mandible, mandible angle around here, angle. angle. And the, uh, just this is a uh, okay, carotid. This is a uh, arterial face, you can see. Uh, so this is a called carotid space here. Now in head and neck, uh, everything has to uh, be uh, related to certain spaces. I will tell you more detailed spaces. So what uh, you have to describe. So if you see something uh, here or here, this uh, lateral to pharynx, that's a parapharyngeal space. Posterior is a retropharyngeal. Anterior to vertebral body is a prevertebral space. Okay, so this is a carotid space here. Carotid should be here, but on the le uh, right side, uh, you don't see it. this kind of a uh, uh, large ring. You see a little dark, uh, low density, but here is a dissect, right side, the dissected, uh, right side, the carotid artery, this section. Uh, when you uh, diving, jump from the high, uh, you know, uh, uh, too high maybe, when you uh, jump down to water, uh, it's often occurred. Uh, this section, right, carotid. And then that uh, makes uh, this kind of... Uh, <clears throat> okay, it's, uh, the, on the left side, this is another so the left... Uh, uh, Middle cerebral artery territory here. Oh, okay, it's uh, <clears throat> on CT. There's a large, low density. So uh, in CT, everything go by density, electron density. Uh, MR, everything goes by signal intensity. In nuclear medicine imaging, everything goes by okay activity, activity. So the terminology has to be clearly uh, defined. Okay. Uh, on CT, you always have to, MR, same thing. You have to compare uh, both sides to see any slight difference of density or signal intensity. And on uh, MR, it's easy to see the big contrast point, but on CT, sometimes the hazy little bit is not easy. Uh, this is uh, everybody see something wrong and midline shift. Okay. Uh, there's uh, uh, another, uh, there's a midline cortical high signal, high uh, density. So it, uh, it, I say bleeding, uh, thrombosis. Okay, this uh, dural sort of uh, in, uh, enhancement, uh, some uh, thrombosis. Uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, upper cerebral sinus, this kind of cortical sort of thrombosis. So there's sometimes uh, thrombosis occur in the cortical dura veins. Uh, there's a high type. It usually show little curvy linear, uh, sort of a linear type, this kind of things. So anything, anything you have to watch out either. Uh, uh, cortical, or oh, dural uh, vein thrombose. Okay, uh, that's uh, you have to think about. Okay, sometimes irregular uh, little linear enhancement along the xylus here. Uh, so we call xyliform ischemia, uh, sort of a, a small infarct around the cortical the artery. Things, but this could be due to inflammation uh, as well. So, infection, inflammation, stroke, ischemia, infarct, look like. Okay, this uh, 
So this uh, is a little prominent. Uh, and atrophy, you see much more uh, large space of this uh, cell side. Uh, this uh, ventricle a little bit enlarged. This is what you normally expect. Okay, and the, but the, uh, in the white mirror, you often see a little uh, tiny sort of a, uh, high density. Yeah. Uh, now oh, uh, we can use a certain uh, specific uh, uh, per, per sequence uh, uh, to sensitive such a tiny micro. In fact, but often you see this kind of tiny things. Uh, this uh, uh, sometimes a uh, periventricular edema on T2 images. Uh, you can see in the tiny microvascular. But the, you have to also watch out uh, tiny little things around the ventricle uh, with multiple sclerosis. Uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, relatively young uh, ladies. And the, uh, this uh, tiny uh, sort of a plaques uh, uh, perpendicular to ventricle. So shape is uh, different, but uh, certain uh, uh, enhanced vascular lesion together. So those, are, and then uh, some uh, unusual intracranial hypertension, uh, which is a still unknown disease, but it's a very, the risk uh, that's how uh, very increase the pressure of CSF, uh, often related to certain stroke or trauma things, but there's a diffuse enhancement in the dura. Uh, so this is a finding of intracranial hypertension. And uh, so herniation is a uh, very dangerous thing, so, but the three types of herniation and the, herniate, the brain herniated down here or herniated down is transtentorial or tonsillar herniation. This is the uh, uh, most dangerous. Yes. Uh, any tumor compressing this uh, uh, because uh, respiration, all things uh, will be stuck right up here. On MRI, you can see just a hazy sort of uh, increased signal intensity with the tentorial subtentorial herniation. So that's kind of things you have to recognize. Sometimes you don't see any uh, cell side things, brain whole things, uh, the density, unlike you don't see anything. This is a, a diffuse anoxic brain. So, uh, uh, you know, brain death, the patient must be comatose. So the brain flow study or uh, certain uh, ECD things uh, will not show anything inside the uh, cerebral and cerebellar death to call brain death. So now in the neck, okay, we have a anatomical landmark schema. Yeah, okay, you have to. Uh, all our pharynx is right here, all our pharynx. Okay, uh, over, over line here. Okay, this, uh, this is a vocal cord here. So, uh, uh, major pharynx is, uh, major pharynx behind the nose down here is uh, up here. Mm -hmm. Nasal cavity here, just so, so behind the, that nasal pharynx uh, down to oral pharynx. And then hypopharynx is uh, about here. Yeah, so hyoid bone is here. So it's uh, about this level. So uh, 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 on the front, this is a vocal cord. Okay, there's a supra gratis and gratis here and sub gratis. So on the sagittal again, epic gratis here, higher the bone, thyroid cartilage, vocal cord here, and cricoid cartilage is right here, trachea here. So this is a landmark. So it's uh, uh, together. 
Okay, a true vocal cord here. Around that is a cricoid cartilage. And then uh, uh, it's a ventricle, laryngeal ventricle here. Okay, so it's a, if there's any uh, tumor in this supraglottic tumor, uh, glottic here, subglottic. So that's what uh, you have to uh, precisely describe. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you have to know about the spaces. So what this is a uh, maxillary sinus. Behind it is a, is a, a buccal sinus. Muscular muscles here, muscular the space. And there's a thyroid muscles here. This is a nausea, so nasal pharynx here. And uh, so this is a para nasal uh, pharyngeal. It's a retro pharyngeal. And the prefrontal carotid space here. That's, a, that's what I list. So if there's some tumor here, then you have to say there is a nodule or a mass in the right para is adjacent, nasal pharyngeal space. That's what you have to describe. And so uh, in the buccal space, uh, you have uh, all kind of benign, so the, it's, uh, it's uh, all kind of inflammatory, benign lesion, but uh, in head and neck, most common is chemical cell cancer. Uh, it's, uh, that's, and muscular space, uh, just behind the buccal space, again, all kind of benign malignant, so malignant uh, fibrohistiosarcoma and rhabdomyosarcoma in children, chondrosarcoma, that's a muscular space. And so uh, again, uh, this, uh, the buccal space is right here, and this is a muscular space, pharyngeal, uh, para, retro, and uh, things. And then here, uh, the carotid space, and the parotid gland is usually right here, parotid. Okay, so uh, in the uh, mucosal, that's uh, this uh, around the little mucosal uh, space, space, uh, schema cell cancer is most common, but the benign tumors are inflammatory. And the uh, uh, paraphernalia, which is the most common tumor circle, usually. Okay, it's uh, all kind of the uh, schema cells, sarcoma, mucoepidermal cancer, and some benign uh, inflammatory agents. So uh, uh, this uh, is a spinal canal here, but our bodies. So uh, it's uh, uh, this paraspinal muscle, if there's something paraspinal muscle. And the, uh, in front of this vertebra, the prevertebra, uh, pre or uh, around this perivertebra, around this perivertebra space. So uh, here, okay, it, this is a vertebral body, so it's a prevertebral space, prevertebral. And this uh, uh, pharynx is a vitro pharynx, between this called danger space, the inflammation, all things spread through this, uh, space, uh, retropharyngeal space, all the uh, schema cell lymphoma, and the benign or the hemangioma, lipoma, and then the inflammation. And so uh, it's uh, on the routine x-ray, you may see some ill-defined uh, low density CT show here. This is a uh, Anytime you have a low density, particular air, that's an abscess. Air. Abscess produce air. So, a uh, prevertebral space again, malignant tumor, uh, schema cell, and hum, uh, lymphoma, and then uh, certain uh, benign tumor, so that's uh, uh, inflammation. So, carotid body is uh, right here. So in that carotid body, the vagus nerve, uh, 10th cranial nerve runs. And then 
uh, Jason is or uh, this uh, uh, other uh, ninth, twelve nerves here. So in the carotid space uh, again, uh, schema cell tumor, but the uh, uh, paraganglium, this is carotid body tumor, glomus tumor. That's uh, what you have to think about it. So this kind of case. Uh, it's a bit too big, but this is a carotid space uh, in ants, that's a glomus tumor. But uh, because of a tenth nerve runs, you have to think also the schwannoma vagus nerve in that occasion. So this is a mass in the, the uh, usually uh, greater than three centimeters, we call mass, less than three nadir. And so uh, it's, uh, you measure here and shape irregular and margin is smooth. So uh, it's uh, uh, usually uh, there's a margin, smooth margin indicates the benign things. And heterogeneity is hallmark of malignant tumor. So right side, the carotid space. And so this uh, all diagram of detailed anatomical landmark on the X, uh, axial, you can see all things. So you have to uh, learn this kind of thing. So it's a practical gland, certainly, as also like uh, malignant, particularly uh, mucoepidermoid carcinoma, cystic carcinoma, and uh, but also benign, Wharton's tumor, that's called cystic adenoma, uh, and the, uh, it's a pleomorphic adenoma. Uh, somehow, Wharton tumor is a functionally active. So uh, when we use a patechnitate, it goes there, makes a very hot spot. There's a highly vascular tumor, it's right there. And the uh, parotid gland also, or the mucoid gomid carcinoma, uh, common, adenocystic carcinoma, and the lymphoma and schema cell, those are the things. But the benign tumor, certainly pleomorphic adenoma, was in tumor, oncosense. So this one, uh, well-defined parotid space, and the, the, the major well-defined adenoma, uniform enhanced. And it's a uh, parotid gland here. And the, so this side is a parotid here. Yeah. Sublingual, just under the tongue that has also uh, some uh, benign malignant tumor, uh, but it's uh, rare. So mandibular tumor, so mandibular tumor also, uh, mucopidomoid, adenocystic carcinoma, and then uh, benign polymorphic adenoma. So mandibular space. So here, uh, mandibular on coronal, an axial irregular, certain uh, irregularity. This is a, a Sjogren syndrome patient. This is a chronic adenitis, chronic adenitis. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, some kind of uh, immune disease yeah, uh, patient. And so, the imaging often show atrophic particular and fatty uh, tissues and enhancement. Yeah, all this uh, uh, anatomical landmark, sinuses, axillary, or in the, here, a turbinate, this turbinate. Uh, this uh, uh, the uh, ethmoidal sinus, maxillary, and the air cells here, sphenoidal sinus here, clivus right here, clivus, frontal sinus. So in, in between this uh, infant is uh, uh, meatus, meatus. In, okay, in the eye, you see sort of a, uh, so any irregular uh, classification, you have to think of a retinoblastoma. So it's a mass here, in ants, so it's a but calcium. And the, this nerve normally runs here, but you have uh, 
thickening or uh, nodule here, opting the glioma is most common. You can see enhanced. And then uh, is the thyroid aftermath pathy, which is uh, a relate to uh, lymphocyte accumulation in Graves disease. Graves disease. So uh, uh, this uh, rectus media layer, rectus muscle uh, become atrophic, fibrotic changes, fibrotic changes. And but fat, the, between the fat density, it's a very dark, uh, that's a uh, uh, key thing. And that push the eyeball anterior, it's a burgeoning. Yeah, so we don't know why this happening. Uh, yeah. Usually lymphocytes is a very sensitive radiation, so uh, still some use uh, radiation therapy. Uh, this uh, more occur in Asian patients. Yeah, but the Americans, uh, this kind of Polypoid the lesion is most common in the feeling sinus. Sinusitis can make it, but it's an adula from inflammation, the polypoid. Uh, and the, uh, uh, but this uh, irregular mass lesion, the cribus, that's a uh, codoma. Uh, codoma uh, most occur in this cribus and sacrum. Sacrum and this one is location wise is a bad uh, tumor, but the chondrom, uh, chodoma versus, versus uh, chondrosarcoma look alike on images. So, here on that uh, pituitary area surrounding all this uh, petrous bones here uh, has an important or this uh, 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 carotid. And then all this uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, third, fourth, sixth, uh, this uh, nerve branches runs here. So if there's any uh, tumor compressing, or you expect to see some, uh, you know, all this uh, 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 changes of nerve functions. So this is important to recognize that those things. This petrous, this uh, temporal bone, this part of petrous. So, basal artery also run here. Uh, yeah, it's a pans, the brain here, pans, fourth ventricle here. So, any tumor here is, and so th this is a pans here, cerebellum here, cerebral pans angle is right here. So, this is a typical. Cerebellum, pons, cerebellum, pontine angle is right here. So it's a tumor here, very here. So it's a, a, a nerve ninth, uh, usually. It runs here. So the vestibular uh, shivanoma uh, is a very common here, right here. So usually, hearing problem starting. So here, skull base or detailed anatomy, uh, you have to know what's uh, uh, this uh, foramen ovale as a, a, a uh, uh, fifth nerve runs here. Uh, uh, for a man, spinosum here, as a middle manager artery here, carotid here. Carotid adjacent is the jugular vein, so carotid, so carotid space here. Okay. So in the uh, ear, there's uh, three parts and different pathology. Yeah? So uh, usually, okay, here uh, the common is a middle ear cholesteatoma. Cholesterol. So this is uh, some uh, nodal or uh, mass occupying middle ear. This immediately a cholesterol, yeah, invading uh, all these petrous bones. And uh, uh, here, cochlear vestibule, here you can see some enlarged, uh, uh, you know, some uh, that's a, uh, uh, a segment of uh, the left side, the facial nerve, facial nerve uh, canal here. Yeah. 
that's uh, due to uh, Shivanoma, fashion of Shivanoma. Yeah. So always compared to the other side, you know, something wrong with the thing. So the cry was here, it respond all this uh, yeah, air cells in the ear. So uh, and the down there, the cervical is better anterior, posterior. Again, uh, the anterior thyroid cancer lymphoma and the inflammation. Posterior, uh, usually uh, schema cell or lymphoma and then the inflammation. Uh, in between, you know, anterior, posterior to diffuse things. Uh, you have to think about uh, hygroma or a certain schema cell cancer is most common. And then uh, a multiple region, particularly schema cell, but the posteriorly, posterior, anything posterior, you think about neurogenic tumor, neurofibromatosis, I think. Okay, here, uh, yeah. you can see, see, this is a cricoid cartilage, the thyroid cartilage here. Okay, vocal cord here, you can see it's a little bump here, small glottic. Uh, glottic uh, tumor uh, here. Uh, so all this uh, uh, carotid jugular here, whatever body. <laughs> and here, uh, this a thick cut set, a nerve root here. You know, any disc or things compressing here, uh, thick cut set or a compressing nerve root here makes a certain pain here. Okay, so uh, it's, a, uh, it's a huge cystic mass, uh, it's a, but this is a, a, a laryngocele, laryngocele, just it's unusual. But the common thing is a thyroglossal duct or a cyst. The cyst comes uh, from the uh, th remnant thyroglossal duct. So this uh, uh, it's non enhanced central part, that's cystic, only really enhanced in the periphery. It's just under the uh, chin over here, that's a thyroglossal duct. You have to think about sublingual so thyroid usually here, but it's, uh, this case, a large one in the right here. Uh, sublingual, so sublingual. So it's uvula here. Uh, there's a lingual, tons of, there's tongue base. Uh, this uh, palatine tonsil and the, uh, some uh, mandibular gland here, parotid here. Okay, so it's uh, this oral fed, oral fedings here. So para, retro, prevertebral. So uh, there's a tongue base on the right side. That's a schema cell most common here. And uh, see this is our lingual space. Now, <clears throat> anytime you have CB cancer, you have to always look at a lymphatic system. Uh, and there is a leveling. Level one is uh, just right here, level one. If there's any nodular here, the level. Uh, level two A is uh, around the mandibular angle two. Uh, level 2B is uh, around uh, this uh, carotid space, carotid, uh, this uh, jugular, so around here. That's uh, above uh, hyoid bone. Let's see later, I will show you. Between hyoid bone and cricoid cartilage, that's called level 3. Level 4 is below there. Okay. Level 5 is a posterior cervical channel. Uh, five also A and B. Okay, five A A is always above above the uh, cricoid. So those are the, so when you see something, the so most common metastasis is right here, stenocoroid mastoid muscle here. That's a uh, two above higher. That's a two two B two B two A uh, said it's a uh, uh, carotid. A, uh, level 1A is here, 1B around here, 
two A here, two B is here. Three is behind, uh, may, uh, three, four, I just said, I'll show later, but five is uh, behind the uh, sonocleb mastoid. So anything here, there's a five, five level. Five A is above cricoid, five B is below cricoid. Now you can see all this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, yeah, intervertebral discus here. This a spinal cord uh, comes here, running here. Okay, this alignment is important. Alignment. Okay, uh, uh, okay. So here, this is sternocleidomastoid. There's an artery here. There's a, uh, yeah. uh, this is carotid space, but there's a uh, uh, right adjacent. So it's uh, more like a 2B, 2B. Here is a multiple actually here, right here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here is a diagram, or you can see it's a 1A, B, and 2A. There's a above hyoid. Cricoid cut it here, three, four down here, but P behind the sternocleid muscle, muscle five, uh, A and B, this is uh, divided by cricoid. Uh, this axia, okay. Uh, in the neck, uh, you always look at uh, this uh, uh, the internal carotid artery stenosis. There's, there's something, so this uh, a vessel should be here, there's some. A yeah, cholesterol plague here, yeah, 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 okay. And so it's uh, sometimes it's this kind of narrowing things, but sometimes aneurysmal dilatation, bulging, uh, bulging and dissection, that's uh, all important things so you have to look at. And if there's a narrowing, there is a measurement and then the stenosis percentage, why does, so the whole this, this, and times so percentage, how much narrowed. Uh, and then certain uh, uh, classification things, but may, uh, depending on the density, there's a window leveling density, you can see the difference. Uh, so so may, when you measure, the, you have to make a correct uh, uh, window and leveling setting to measure correct. Thyroid here, thyroid has normally high density because of uh, iodine, very high. So if there's any mass things, so here, so some uh, uh, nodule here. And the calcification is usually uh, related to uh, previous uh, bleeding things. And then uh, right behind the superior inferior pore of thyroid is a tiny small uh, parathyroid. So now in this old slide, but now new CTs can show very fine structural information. So easy. Uh, another, uh, that's, uh, this is a okay, thyroid cartilage here. So uh, whole cystic mass here, uh, pushing trachea or things. And it's a large cystic, that's a thyroid cyst unusual case. But here, this is thyroid. Is a, there is a very low density mass, but there is also, this looks like a cystic mass, but there's a irregular. This is a parathyroid. Parathyroid has a different types. A posterior, right posterior, inferior, that's the most common. That's an E type, E, A, B, C, D, E, E, G. But this is a uh, ectopic. There's a falling, falling, this F type, F type. Uh, so this is a, 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 a esophagus here, esophagus. So if the parasitism goes deep, uh, deep, that's a, a superior, inferior. Superior is A, B is a lower, inferior. So when there is a parasitism, I don't know, must suspect it, you have to report either superior, inferior, right, left, 
And then right behind the thyroid or further deep uh, adjacent to esophagus. So that kind of description makes it very useful to save time for surgeons. That's our role. And now in the vertebral body, you can see thicker sac here, spinal cord here. Okay, this is a, okay, just like a brain dural arachnoid and subarachnoid space and the pier cord. And depending on where is tumor, intramedullary or intradural, but extramedullary or extradural uh, has all different differential diagrams. So we're looking all three dimensional image intramedullary astrocytoma, astrocytoma. And this is a uh, uh, extra medallary, but intra dura. Oh, this is meningioma. So it's differential diagnosis, ependymoma, around the ependymoma. And this uh, show that in the, uh, uh, the long, let's see, let me see. Okay, we have a little. Okay, you know that there are uh, uh, 10 lobes on the right side, eight lobes on the left side, because in the left, uh, apical posterior is a one segment, and then anteromedial basal segment is one. So you have to memorize that. So the lobe uh, uh, is a, uh, okay, three on the right side, but uh, right, and then two middle five, the lower segment. But the left side, okay, upper is a superior inferior uh, segment. And then in that, uh, the posterior or superior is a one, but the lower anteromedial medial segment is one, so it make a four. So total is a eight. So you have to look at uh, where this uh, landmark. If you look at the good CT, you will see fissure on the right side, two fissure. Left side, one lingular fissure. And then uh, it divided by all these kind of things. So uh, uh, you, when you see nodule, just say there is a, a nodule in the right lung. That's a wrong report. You have to say precisely what segment, well, which lobe? And this uh, bronchial segment, uh, all dividing, dividing, all the, finally, the alveolar sac, all this terminal. So all these uh, uh, things makes a different shape of the, the lesion, all this, uh, uh, the artery runs together with the bronchi as well as the lymphatic system, all this. So uh, now good CT show all this kind of tiny segments. Uh, so it's uh, which lobe is a collapse and then the, uh, the other is a compensating. So it shapes the so lobe atraxis. So this is a, some nodular things, density, fluid here, things. So this is called round up like tassis uh, by adjacent. And this is the alveolar density, the haziness, the alveolar, so-called ground glass. Ground glass is usually indicating uh, either inflammation or edema. So uh, with the coronavirus, you also show ground glass, ground glass, either central or peripheral. Uh, there's all differential diagonals. I don't have much time. So viral pneumonia usually show this kind of haziness, uh, it's alveolar density. It's sometimes uh, it's a honeycomb type things. Uh, viral interstitial alveolar edema all look like, depending on the stage here. Okay, it's, uh, so consolidation is uh, a, 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 is a alveolar plus interstitial. It's, uh, a uh, uh, more tissue congested things. And so again, it's a pneumonia, uh, but ALDS, that's uh, after trauma, all things, that's a common issue, consolidation. And so bacterial pneumonia is often related to 
the interstitial and this kind of things. Uh, <clears throat> and this uh, uh, so-called crazy tabing, uh, uh, septum is uh, thick, so with the ground grass. And the uh, alveolar proteinosis, uh, unusual the rare uh, disease, is often show this kind of shape. And there's, there's a thickening septum. Uh, it's a smooth or irregular, makes a differential diagnosis. So again, there's a pneumonia, alveolar proteinosis, so edema, hemorrhage, that kind of thing. A irregular nodular shape is often sarcoidosis or carcinomatosis. Carcinoma, really irregular, and, uh, and the tiny nodular things in the periphery is called trim bird shape, trim bird inflammation, usually uh, uh, pneumonia, uh, aspergillus uh, pneumonia, do the bronchiolitis, that's a tiny nodular, tiny or diffuse, that's a trim bird shape, that's an inflammation. And if, uh, there's a bronchiolitis, you have to have inspiration, expiration to make a collapsed uh, lung and also uh, this kind of uh, inflamed lung tissue. Uh, so lymphatic nodular, it's uh, uh, important in sarcoidosis or uh, pneumoconiosis or carcinomatosis, lymphatic nodules. And the tiny all this uh, uh, another miliary TB or some certain uh, uh, metastasis, particularly thyroid, renal cell, that kind of things. And then uh, uh, tuberculosis uh, is a, a, a healed one primary. So this is a very uh, miliary tuberculosis. It's a healed, just adenopathy often or some fibrotic changes, healed one. And the uh, adenopathy is, uh, and the cavitary lesion, and this uh, is some um, uh, called halo sign, air crescent sign, and this uh, uh, can be related to hemorrhage or ground inflammation, sarcoma, metastasis, all look like cystic. I mean, it's cystic is it's a air pocket cystic. Uh, the bulla is called. Uh, bulla is greater than one centimeter called bulla. Less than one centimeter is uh, called black black. So cystic is uh, uh, multiple things you have to think about. Emphysema, histiocytosis, bronchiectasis, or uh, lymphangium myomatosis. And pneumocystis crying in old days or pneumocystis zero vetsi, pneumonia, AIDS patient uh, show this kind of interstitial uh, uh, ground grass, and multiple small cystic uh, lesions together. And this is uh, same thing. And this uh, radiation, it depends on the shape. Radiation usually is interstitial pneumonitis and the fibrosis. And the bronchiectasis, the bronchi uh, bronchitis is dilated, as uh, you can see, bronchiectasis. It ruptured and makes a certain emphysematous, a sort of a, a, a air, a diffuse air collection. Mm -hmm. So uh, the air uh, normally like this, but the air, uh, central lobe bronchiola uh, dilatation uh, makes a emphysematous. So there's a sentry lobular, and the whole thing is a pan lobular. So it's a uh, just uh, not much uh, lung tissue, or just the air diffuse air things. Uh, expands, expanding, that's emphysematous. And the fibrotic changes together here, the idiopathic fibrosis uh, is another thing. And the honeycomb, the other, uh, pulmonary fibrosis, this one is uh, from various inflammation or scar tissue. Aspergillosis in the United States is a uh, still problem. It's a cavitary lesion base. Uh, so cavitary lung is a cancer, inflammation, uh, vasculitis, they all look like. And the uh, papillomatosis also shows some cavitary, uh, cavitary lesions, you can see. And the uh, pulmonary emboli is nowadays is a uh, uh, common, you know, Watch like a filling defect here. 
uh, too many pulmonary emboli we see nowadays without symptoms. And so uh, it's a dilemma how we handle. It's a, old days we have a classical uh, sort of a, a triangular high density on pulmonary infarction. Nowadays you don't see because of uh, air. Soon after the patient uh, develops uh, shortness of breath, chest pain, they put the air, uh, oxygen, so uh, we don't see this kind of, uh, but in old days, and so uh, there's a uh, drug abuse has a lot of septic emboli, you can see it, inflammation together. Lung nodules is a clinical problem nodule. And so uh, it's multiple nodules easy to call metastasis. It's a benign to malignant. Basically, malignant uh, show more uh, shape, speculated, speculated, uh, and a bigger growing. But calcification is more benign. Uh, that's it. Yes, okay. The benign is a calcification, uh, various shape, benign. It's granulomatous disease, all calcified. It is all. And then the fat containing uh, is a benign, fat benign. Uh, so eccentric calcification is not benign. Calcium central calcification is. And then the juxtapura nodule is usually benign. And this kind of uh, benign is atelectasis is benign. And the, uh, uh, this uh, a typical one uh, is certainly difficult. But speculation, that's a cancer. And the bubbly opacity is, could be inflammatory or cancer. And certain uh, uh, is a uh, yeah. persistent, uh, after you give antibiotic for information, persistent solid portion, you have to suspect. And then uh, fibrotic lesion and certain uh, mucus plug can make a confusion. Some respiration uh, uh, makes a sometimes uh, artifactual things. And the uh, atelectasis, sometimes a uh, round atelectasis uh, makes a nodular. So you have to look at a three dimension. Some uh, see the uh, maximum uh, intensity view show like this, but the, on the axial, you look like almost nodular collapse so sometimes. Okay, uh, bronchogenic carcinoma, as you know, has a different shape. Uh, the skin cell usually centrally located. And the uh, non-small cell, this is the largest uh, adenocarcinoma. It's uh, usually periphery, uh, more related to uh, the uh, smoking things. And the small cell central is tiny, but spreading widely. Bronchalveolar is a major problem in diagnosis because it looks like an uh, inflammatory lesion. So uh, most commonly adenocarcinoma and squamous cell, uh, and then small cell in the middle. Um, so here uh, yeah, uh, we uh, make a staging to look, uh, to make a staging you have to look at a, a lymph node, uh, carefully lymph node. And the uh, side lymph node, and the uh, uh, nowadays the surgeons remove whatever we show on the picture, but operability is a still a problem. So that's why uh, we generate the split lung function. Uh, okay, this kind of things. And the uh, centimeter greater than uh, three. The seven makes a different stage, okay. And the uh, uh, pura effusion is now stage four pura effusion, okay. If the malignant pura effusion. And the diaphragm environment, obviously, these things. But otherwise, all is operable, as uh, resectable, resectable. So these are all the uh, input uh, you can, you have to know subcarina is seven. Okay, high is a supra uh, paratracheal is a one infra four, and then uh, AP window uh, is a, a five. Okay, uh, the, the kind of, and then the central bronchial is uh, usually uh, number ten. Mm -hmm. 
So, uh, okay, there's uh, a bronchial barrel carcinoma. It's uh, a, like uh, this, very this, uh, inflammatory, multiple periphery, that's a hallmark of alveolar cell carcinoma. The uh, Asians have non smoking lung cancer. So, uh, uh, because of small, PET scan doesn't show. And they, uh, so just a uh, short follow up. And then uh, uh, it's slow growing tumor, so it's difficult to handle. So, this kind of uh, alveolar density, you know, sometimes widespread, like inflammation. Okay. So lymphangiol is spread, you may call it B sign on the, along the gains. It's, uh, it's just a linear prominence and it's difficult. And the superior circus tumor is right here and, and here is extending. But uh, uh, this is special uh, tumor. Uh, once you remove the prognosis, is pretty good. Yeah, so pulmonary uh, lymphoma. A primary pulmonary lymphoma occur. A lymphoma can occur in any organ system as a primary. Uh, so, uh, so anything bulky, large, you always think about lymphoma. Hemorrhage, just like a similar finding, hemorrhage. Uh, so, laceration, uh, pneumothorax, pneumothorax, uh, it's all collapsed the lung, uh, air bronchogram. Boy, that's. Uh, so mediastinal, anterior mediastinal, usually T, uh, thymoma, okay, sub-link, sub, uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, thyroid remnant down, or uh, uh, lymphoma, but in, uh, this uh, uh, germ cell tumor, rarely, thymic, thymic, uh, thymus tumor, you have to think about thymus, thyroid, or uh, uh, lymphoma, those are the, anterior mediastinum, uh, so a thymoma, benign shape, benign, but malignant irregular path, okay, uh, certain, uh, a, uh, uh, this anterior mediastinum mass, this is lymphoma, okay, a posterior, always think about neurogenic tumor, neurofibroma, shubanoma, neurofibroma, all this, and then uh, sort of a certain esophageal, uh, Jankos duplication, cyst diverticulum, and this esophageal cancer as well, thickened, or uh, you can see this irregularity on uh, trust study. And the uh, lower esophagus is usually adenocarcinoma, so upper one's chemo cell. So be, uh, biologically behave different, but they, uh, they go to the lymph node and then lungs. So always look at lymph node carefully. Hyatal hernia is another hyatal hernia thickening as a mass. So uh, esophageal gastric cancer, EG junction, uh, tumors, and lymph node. Achalasia is on you, just dilatation of, uh, and Chagas disease, all secondary achalasia, just uh, unusual case. You have some, uh, mass uh, or differential diagram, depending on location and classification and then uh, contrast enhancement. And uh, this kind of all, these this, uh, vessels are pre-vascular. This uh, uh, inside here, uh, this uh, uh, here, I um, think the AP window, uh, autopulmonary window. This uh, the uh, trachea is a pre-trachea, pre para trachea or just para. So it's a superior inferior trachea. So that's, that's what you name. So this one is a, 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 a sort of a low density. Is, this is nodal area. So here, here. Yeah. So it's a good uh, description, location. So this uh, bronchial endobronchial customer, some nodule inside the bifurcation of bronchus. This is. Uh, uh, there's a, a multiple uh, nodular region around the, uh, the uh, pleura. You have to think of a mesothelium. They make a, a laterated fluid, but anything like that. It's a bad tumor. Uh, these uh, vessels, you have to also think about aortic arch here, 
normally okay uh, subclavian uh, left vertebra first and left uh, common carotid right common carotid okay and the right vertebra but there's some uh, kind of uh, yeah anatomical variation. The left side uh, can occur from the right side subclavian. The subclavian, and so that sometimes it's anatomical variation I'm confused. But important thing is the uh, aortic dissection. Aorta is dilated, okay? This false lumen here is uh, here. So uh, you can see this kind of things, dissection here, dissection here. So uh, ascending aorta is called Stanford A dissection. Descending is a stem for B dissection. When you see here, you have to recognize this section. And the blood uh, <laughs> cloud, so intramural uh, hematomas. So here is a hematomas here. So, so this is a lumen, but this is a false lumen here. So you can, so this kind of irregular also, ulceration makes the things. Okay, so uh, in the heart anatomy, you know, on the left, right, left ventricle wall is uh, about, this is 1.5 centimeter, but this is slightly less, but if this is uh, thicker than this one, there's a uh, aortic stenosis you have to think about, papillary muscle here, right ventricle, right atrium, so uh, always think about, okay, right atrium. So the uh, coronary artery, you know, anterior descending, posterior, and diagonal, uh, there's a lot of diagonal branches here. Okay, so this is a landmark, huh? anterior, uh, posterior. Okay, there's uh, so in the various, uh, and then our delayed uh, contrast enhancement on MRI is usually very significant for or myocardial infarction things, this kind of delay the contrast enhancement, enhance. And cardiomyopathy is a major concern clinically. There are three types, okay, depending on thickening, the hypertrophy, hypertrophy. and restrictive or small, in, but dilatation, this is congested. So all different, okay, uh, hypertrophic, dilatation, and then, uh, so also pericardial effusion, fluid around, fluid, fluid. Okay, you can see the density uh, difference. And the left atrial myxoma is most common. Atrium here, large myxoma. The left ventricle has a sarcoma, angiosarcoma, most common. Uh, this is a uh, uh, thrombus in the uh, arterial appendix, appendix. And the uh, uh, ventricular mass here, here, uh, there's a uh, metastasis from various cancers, but angiosarcoma is most common primary tumor. But the thrombus also look like a real mass. So uh, MR can separate thrombus from tumor uh, because uh, the thrombus uh, has super paramagnetic the hemocidal. And the uh, pulmonary hypertension uh, can also show, okay, uh, so right ventricular, some this kind of trabeculation and dilated pulmonary uh, main artery and this kind of things. And then there's uh, so a thrombus, okay, feeling defect, always look at it. So again, uh, the aortic dissection, dissection is important. Uh, and then the aortic rupture, so the here, the uh, contrast, but it's uh, leaking things. And then the uh, superbenic has a feeling deep. Anytime you see a feeling deep, uh, you have to worry about thrombos things. And certainly here, uh, all tiny things. And the uh, graft nowadays, you uh, have to uh, know any leaking, okay, thrombos, that's a, uh, Okay, the uh, breast density or uh, shape also makes difference. Now, uh, in the liver, uh, you know, there's a, a, a certain segments, the right, left, uh, hepatic lobe, okay. <clears throat> you draw inferior vena cava and gallbladder. 
Mr. Gorbel, that divides right to left. And then uh, the uh, portal vein uh, divides the superior inferior. Hepatic vein uh, divides the anterior posterior. So uh, uh, you have uh, one is a caudate right around, uh, you know, Gorbel, the fossa. And then uh, second is superior uh, left. Third, anterior, inferior, left. Uh, fourth uh, is above uh, this polar vein A, below for this. That's a uh, Gaussian axial. And that's uh, uh, this, uh, right side, uh, upper high is a seven or eight. Eight is anterior, seven is posterior. Uh, inferior is anterior five, posterior six. So here you have to uh, you know very detail, okay? And then uh, inferior vein K by here, uh, okay, down here first. Inferior gold red here. You divide it here. So it's the right, left, okay? And then uh, put it high, okay? The first from ligament here. Okay, first one, ligament. They divide the medial and lateral left lobe. And then uh, a, a right side a, by middle cerebral vein, uh, you divide the, okay, anteriorly five, posteriorly three. Uh, above is a polar vein divide. Uh, seven posterior, eight. Okay, and the, uh, 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 one is uh, around uh, this uh, inferior vena cava uh, around here. Uh, superior uh, posterior is a uh, level uh, the segment two. Anterior inferior of left hepatic lateral segment is level three. So you have to know exactly yeah, when you have a nodule, you have to say there is a nodule and the major size, the shape, and then Segment is a two, three, you have the precise image for the surgeons. Not that there is a tumor in the left lobe, that's, that's no longer useful. In the uh, uh, retroperitoneum, you have uh, kidneys, or it's a uh, peri is all around, para is a uh, uh, adjacent. Okay, so it's a uh, uh, posterior gerotus fascia, anterior gerotus fascia. Okay, and this uh, this called anterior pararenal space, anterior. posterior pararenal space. And so uh, if there's a tumor, thing, you have to report uh, in certain space, anterior pararenal, posterior pararenal, perirenal. Uh, now, retroperitoneum all here, and the uh, the lymph node we used to, okay, a uh, uh, left, right, pararenal, pre, uh, not para, para aorta, anterior, and the cava, aorta cava in between here, uh, anterior, posterior cava. Uh, at the level of uh, L2, 3, 4, that's what you have to describe. Uh, but these are all retro patterns. Okay, now in the upper abdomen, you have the stomach here, and this is a, okay, a, a, this is a pancreas here. This is a lesser sac here. Okay, here again, this is a whole, this a, a space is a perirena all around perirena, but this is an anterior pararena, posterior pararena. Okay. So uh, anything you, uh, you have to prescribe. Uh, so here again, kidney, adrenal, infrabenic organ, pancreas here. This uh, pancreas is, is in the perirenal space here. And so the zerota, this is the anterior, uh, posterior perirenal space. So uh, it's all structures on there. 
Okay, this is a lesser sac is here, panc anterior pancreas. The pancreas tumor here, you have to describe pancreas head, the body, tail, and then look for a lymph node is a anterior per, uh, peri pancreas or posterior peri pancreas or this uh, uh, aorta, uh, superior uh, mesentery artery vein. Vein uh, tumor attached to any artery that's inoperable. Uh, vein uh, is still operable. Uh, so, so you have to uh, know the relationship. And then the subhepatic space, a uh, peri, uh, is this uh, subhepatic, is the retroperitone, uh, or this uh, a, a peritonia spreading all tumor, ovarian, uh, stomach. Uh, or can, pancreas cancer is a nodule around this, uh, uh, this kind of space you have to look for. So uh, here all this, uh, uh, also uh, pancreas duct is here and all the uh, adenocarcinomas in general, particularly in the head, common side here, uh, make a dilatation of pancreas duct. That's a uh, classical finding. Uh, if uh, there's a urinary tumor in pancreas, you don't see the dilatation. Okay, and so all the tumor spread, or cancer, uh, stomach cancer also spread around all this uh, pank, uh, stomach cancer here. It's uh, around uh, uh, perigastric lymph node and gastrohepatic ligament. It runs around here. That's the tumor spread. Okay. So, okay, that's uh, all the uh, ascites here. And so, carcinomatosa spread here. All this is a uh, fluid, they, they connected here. So, that's why it's all this uh, peritone, perihepatic uh, metastasis. So, here all is. Uh, it's a cul de sac, has all the uh, uh, tumor seeding from stomach over it. <laughs> and it's a lateral view, uh, adrenal here. This is uh, all epiploid from lesser omentum. So, omentum here and mesentery, they are just like apron of the things. This uh, all uh, tumor spread, omental. Momentum or mesentery here. Uh, again, same thing. And uh, in the, uh, uh, you often see some kind of artifact, thing that's called beam hardening artifact. This kind of a uh, metallic uh, high density makes a falsely positive FDG or any pet because of CT attenuation, over attenuation, and then erroneous uh, or activity around here. Things. Okay. And it's, uh, uh, when you use a contrast agent, always uh, be careful about perfusion artifact because of uh, some uh, branches is uh, narrowed, obstructed. So uh, it's a slow passing through the branches. So then it looks like a, a infarct here, but it's a uh, a, a delayed sort of perfusion artifact or things. Okay, sometimes, uh, yeah, certain superior uh, vena uh, cap suction, cirrhosis, all things, uh, AB shunting things. Okay. The, uh, uh, there's also some anatomical variation. The left hepatic artery comes from left gastric artery or something. Uh, right hepatic artery from superior mesentery artery. So such an anatomical variation is confusing. Uh, so uh, in contrast study, you have to know how the bolus injection is good. If uh, the nurse inject a little bit, little bit, you dilute everything, then whole uh, characteristic uh, uh, contrast enhancement is not gonna work. Now in the liver, a uh, most common, uh, an arterial lesion, hemangioma. Hemangioma typically arterial face, arterial face is aorta. You look at it. 
is puddling uh, in the periphery. And Venus is, is goes into the center, diffuse out into the middle. That's a human cavernous network makes this kind of. So it's a giant Himalayan periphery and arterial Venus is filling. Next is adenome. Adenome is nodular hepatocellular uh, uh, sort of uh, tissues here, but there is also 10, 20% has a Cooper cell as well. But if you use a Hida uh, agent, then you can feel these things. If it's a diffuse enhancement, it will be just like a, a hepatic adenocarcinoma, same cellular element. Uh, but, so, but it could be a hypervascular, hypovascular, uh, depending on the timing, depending on relative things. Uh, for kind of the hyperoid, the characteristic has a central scar, central scar. Uh, that's an uh, inflammatory scar things. And then uh, it has uh, mostly Cooper cells. So uh, the sulfur colloid will delineate in 70, 90, 80%. Uh, for kind of the central scar is a key mark, central, central scar. Uh, uh, cancer, hepatoma has uh, all variable contrast enhancement. Uh, okay. And then, uh, but because of uh, heterogeneity, and uh, if the large, you have all the uh, central necrosis uh, things. Uh, hypervascularity, but uh, sometimes hypovascular, but there has also a venous uh, thrombosis, portal vein thrombosis is, uh, and cholangiocarcinoma is another, it's all multiple nodular enhanced, it's uh, all, um, the CA19-9 is most helpful. Uh, hepatoma is alpha theta protein level. You have the Kraskin tumor, that's a, uh, that's a tumor uh, at the junction of right and left hepatilobe, it's obstructing the biliary system, so you dilate dilatation. Biliary system. Biliary system runs anterior to the uh, polar veins. So you look at uh, things. And so biliary cyst adenoma, just like a cystic tumor. So this is a, okay, you contrast the biliary system is right here. You see, normally you don't see this kind of biliary dilatation. Okay, is. Uh, 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 lymphoma can involve a uh, spleen uh, with a diffusing atom or uh, focal nodules. Uh, spleen, uh, it's rare to involve a liver without involvement of uh, spleen, so simultaneous. Yeah. And the uh, metastasis is the most common in the liver, or multiple uh, thyroid, carcinoid, or highly vascular, or ring shape is a classical. Uh, but the pancreatic or other uh, stomach, or all show dilatation is the pancreatic cancer characteristic. Mm, and gastric cancer is metastasis. And the, uh, all this, uh, Peritoneal uh, seeding uh, makes a hepatic nodular things. And the, but cholangitis is, uh, see this uh, dilatation of uh, biliary trees, but it, it could be just obstruction uh, by inflammation or a tumor, you cannot separate. Just cholangitis can do the same thing. Yeah, this kind of sclerosing cholangitis or just dilatation. And the abscess is uh, like a cystic big tumor. Uh, it's a, the abscess. It's a, adrenals is a small incidental. See, adrenal normally like this. But it's an adults, you have to consider, but you have to have a thin section to evaluate. You know. MR is the best to uh, specifically diagnose it. So, uh, adrenal metastasis. So CT can measure density and then the differentiate that. <clears throat> so this is another lot of things uh, here. here. Now, this is a normally what you see. It's, a line. it's an adrenal, hyperplastic, thick, little bit thickening, a nodular, macronodular, or a pheochromocytoma. That's what uh, my, it's any uh, 
No? So the fatty density, low density, it has a myelipoma, you think about myelipoma. Fiocrons are large lesions, so the heterogeneous central, and there's a high blood pressure or uh, potassium, that's a key. And the abdominal uh, lymph node, I mentioned, retroperitonia, and the uh, uh, pelvic lymph node, pelvic external, internal, common area. Depending on the location, you have to prescribe. As I said, uh, depending on the uh, uh, relationship with the aorta, inferior vena cava, and the level, uh, whatever body you have to describe. The pelvic lymph node, all this internal ilia, common ilia. Uh, <clears throat> in external ilia, you have a media ladder of trade, internal. Common ilia also is the medial lateral, just a little extra. But uh, uh, on CTMR, uh, anything greater than one centimeter, then you suspect fatty metastasis uh, in cancer patients. But less than one, you cannot tell what that is. Yeah, uh, so uh, sometimes uh, you know, this, this aorta vena cable. So left uh, uh, para aortic larger at the level of a kidney or a L1 or a 2. Uh, but later contrast show this uh, this uh, a renal vein crossing here. So uh, just the non-contrast study is impossible. Yeah? So uh, a gastric cancer here or surrounding you know, this or implant metastasis or it's, uh, yeah, gives a gastrointestinal stromal tumor uh, usually around the stomach uh, is the most common submucosal gastric tumor. And the uh, yeah, PETS can show probably, the FDG PETS can show the best. But any, uh, uh, this tumor can occur in any place uh, in, the, in the abdomen, but the uh, stomach area most common, okay. The cholecystitis is another <clears throat> common finding with the thickening of wall is non-specific. Pericholecystic fluid is the most reliable. Uh, so it's irregular around. And once the inflammation spread out, the mesentery or omentum, the, the fat density is changing. So we call dirty fat, but uh, the fatty tissue become attenuated. So a stranded uh, mesentery momentum is the terminology we use to describe inflammatory spread. Okay, after cholecystectomy, dilatation uh, common by that is one by one, 1.5 centimeters common. But the local dilatation is called a cystic tumor. Okay, this kind of cyst or a tumor this type, or depending on the location, type one, two, three, four. And the spleen is a major up to 13 centimeters is a normal, longest diameter. Uh, it's a, in fact, is most common focal, but the small, like this, nadilla uh, is a gamma, again, the end, uh, body is a serotic or some uh, fungus, uh, some, uh, uh, inflammatory region. The infarct that's the most common. Hemangioma can occur in uh, multiple hemat. And certain laceration or uh, through the aneurysm. Spread also after splenectomy, there's a small tissue around. So uh, uh, to recognize this, uh, you have to have a technician red cell to show this one, technician red cell. Uh, thank God, that has uh, two, uh, uh, two uh, sort of a uh, uh, division. Uh, this core, uh, duct, the top upper one is a duct of uh, Santorini. The bottom is a duct of uh, uh, Wilson. Uh, sometimes it has uh, some dilatation things. Like that. That's a, a dilatation here, pancreatic duct, double duct sign things. Pancreatic head, the mass, uh, pancreatic head, it's all nodal. That's how go here. 
So dilatation of pain reductor is a hallmark all the round. Uh, and the, uh, again, this tumor, but it could be uh, benign uh, mucinous tumor. It's not necessary. And then cyst adenoma or cyst, many different things. And cyst adenoma involving even sprint is all here. This is a body, tail, or tumor. Uh, injury normal, it looks like also very bad tumor. It's a mess here. So it's a cyst here. And the, uh, the, uh, uh, there is a, some low density, but in the pancreatic tail, that's a spring, sort of an intra-pancreatic spring. Again, red cell study. Spring, uh, sequences are all uh, radio labeled uh, either red cell, platelet, or white cells. Pancreatitis uh, is a common clinical problem, just dilatation and, that's, uh, and some kind of adjacent fatty, uh, sort of a stranding, the fat tissue, that's a hallmark. So uh, all the pancreatitis can be, look like a tumor. Uh, so pancreatitis benign is a calcification eventually. So autoimmune pancreatitis is the calcification and mass. The so liposarcoma is a fat tissue here, liposarcoma, most myxoid liposarcoma in the extremity, but pleomorphic liposarcoma in the retroperitoneum fibrosis is a typical fat tissue. And the uh, small bowel obstruction, you can see the uh, dilated small bowel. Uh, this at least the ileus or obstruction. So you have to look at obstruction site. Mm -hmm. So intersection is intersection is a cold small bar together in particular children. It's a all dilatation of small bar. You have to report this kind of uh, small bar dilatation and certainly uh, obstructing some mass here. This in the cecum area here. So our cecal tumor nowadays uh, in the CT chronoscope show the polypoid region, uh, you know, uh, tumor. And the ilia, this ilia is a mass, that's a, a see this kind of a, a streaking things in the medentary, <coughs> this uh, ilia carcinoid, it looks like a cancer, but it's a carcinoid, neuroendocrine tumor. Uh, metastasis here, it looks like similar, very similar. Uh, Volvus, it is called a certain, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 bowel loops makes a dilatation of this obstructing. And that's an uh, important thing. So you look at all this free air. So if there's any perforation, I think so the air goes up, it shows abscess things. It's all it's a free air, air density is a bad sign. And, okay. and there's certain superior military artery, thrombosis military artery, it makes an infarct in the bowel. If the right side is right, inferior mesentery is the left side. Retroperitoneal hematoma or less hemat. Hematoma or fluid, this is all hepatic fluid, ascites or uh, this uh, is all due to uh, ovarian cancer, stomach cancer, pancreas, all this. It's all carcinomatosis, yes, uh, omental cake is a nodular hard thing here. here. And the liver is all perihepatic, perispraining, uh, periacite, all this fluid collection. If there's an adela thing, more likely. So, this uh, so called pseudomyxoma peritonei is uh, from uh, appendixial cancer or ovarian cancer. Peritonitis, all fluid collection by inflammation, all this fat uh, is. Uh, Splendid. Uh, rectal cancer around here, rectal cancer is a bad cancer, spread to lymph node and go to the uh, supra clavicular lymph node very fast. Uh, this also is the coccygeal, okay, recurrent after surgery. In uh, Western diverticulitis is a, a common problem. It's all fat tissue surrounding is a, a stranded inflammation and then sometimes uh, ruptured 
and make a free air. And the uh, uh, graft versus host disease uh, is now also a common clinical problem after all bone marrow transplant in uh, some bowel wall thickened so colitis. So all wall thickened is colitis. So ulcerative colitis is another uh, is a thickened wall, sometimes obstructing, sometimes uh, ruptured. It's all this. Uh, Second the word is hallmark. Crohn's disease is a term, term iliar femoral is also uh, some makes a perirectal abscess and some uh, uh, yeah, wall thickening, like wall thickened. Uh, fissure, wall thickened, some, some fissure, some abscess. That's uh, appendicitis in the right lower quadrant. You can see some mass sometimes. Sometimes, uh, again, it's some kind of ill defined, just the hedginess or the, uh, uh, this, and like uh, the other side is uh, fatty tissue becomes stranded uh, all around here. So you look at all the axial coronal sagittal in that area to call uh, appendicitis or abscess, appendicular risk. Kidneys. Okay, just uh, maybe 10, 15 more. Mm, uh, uh, kidney has a lot of anatomical variation, duplex or uh, something here. Horseshoe kidneys, the hydrocephalus uh, is dilatation of collecting system or ureter by stone, all this uh, radio opaque stone, but there is also the uh, uh, non radio. Uh, a back stone. So you don't see common things. So uh, this all dilated renal pelvis, uh, some stone is a uh, uh, gold bladder stone. There is a, this kind of thing. So it's a medullary nephrocarcinosis. It's a, a pyramid, a renal pyramid has calcification. So you have to consider the hypercalcemia hyperparathyroidism, sarcoid, and uh, that kind of things. And the uh, classification here, renal papillae, but nephrocarcinosis, and certain uh, spongy, medullary spongy kidneys. Hydronephritis, kidneys are sometimes uh, bigger and uh, hazy, non-functioning, that kind of thing. And chronic, uh, small, thin cortex, and sometimes uh, this uh, pyronephritis makes uh, some multiple abscess, a big sense of granular water is pyronephritis. Uh, bacterial abscess, uh, microabscess, yeah, renal abscess, fluid. So uh, this is uh, a nodule in the kidney has uh, also confusion sometimes. Uh, so it's a uh, various uh, pseudotumor, angiolipoma, lipoma, oncocytoma, adenoma, fibroma and cancer, that's these things. Uh, so attenuation, uh, the, uh, uh, the enhancement pattern is important. This is, and then, so uh, the uh, uh, pre-contrast, the cortical medullary phase and nephrogenia, it's usually three phases to make a, a hypervascular, hypovascular renal tumors. Okay, uh, here renal this is one of renal cell. Renal cell often goes to renal vein, inferior vena cava, and go to the lung. So almost all renal cell, renal cell, clear cell mostly, papillary, grown for medullary and things. And, it, and so it's a small nodule. It looks almost like a benign, but it's uh, turned out to be renal cell. So it's a large one, it's great, the seven centimeter stage two. Okay, very invasion on the solitary, you know, this or retropatal implant. In children, Williams tumor, most common, big, and, and <coughs> this one is a kidney origin, yeah. Adrenal or nephroblastoma. This one is a, a polycystic kidney, but this autosomal dominant. That's, Cystic dominant. It's a bilateral autosome. It could be uh, fluid hemorrhage. 
On this thing, you need multiple data, unique camera assist, uh, apps as a uh, hematoma, echinococcal assist, cystadroma, uh, assist, uh, hypernephroma, and then uh, paralysis kidney oil. That's uh, difficult to, uh, but uh, both the classification, simple cyst versus uh, enhancing nodules, so uh, classification one through five. Uh, category four, five become more oh, yes, uh, <coughs> uh, risky. So, so uh, renal and the para renal, uh, para, uh, para pelvic cyst uh, classified the cyst. So, it's all category management. And then uh, renal cell versus uh, hypernephroma or look like. Yeah, so the angiolipoma, lipo, angiomyolipoma is easy because of a CT uh, show uh, fat density. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, also angiomyolipoma. Oncocytoma is uh, a, a slightly enhanced benign looking tumor. Uh, most common uh, benign tumor, well defined. Okay, so uh, lymphoma is also, and the subcapsular certain hematoma, certain aneurysmal infarct or in the pelvis, uh, in uh, female, you have to always look for ovaries. Ovaries uh, supposed to be on the both side in young, but in Mm -hmm. All the patient is atrophic, it's difficult. And it's uh, a uh, round ligament is here, here. And the peritoneum is here. And the, uh, so uh, the ovarian cancer spread to peritoneum. So you look at any nodule here, here. And the So here uh, on the sagittal uh, and male prostate here, uterus here. Okay, and uterus could be retro, uh, 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 retrograde, and the so around ligament is right here. So. Uh, uh, this is a common femoral artery vein, and lymph node is right here, lymph node adjacent to these uh, vessels. So it's uh, inguinal lymph node, inguinal superficial deep, and then external is a lateral, medial, and up trail, up, uh, up high, it's internal. And so here, uh, under the, the Diagram. Mm -hmm. There's over the infundibulum here. Okay, here in the uh, male, you have uh, okay peripheral joint, central gland. Central gland has a anterior transitional joint, and the back here, this a uh, central joint. It's all together central gland. The tumors, eighty percent tumors are in the peripheral but 20% uh, in this uh, transitional zone. So normally hypertrophy uh, is all here uh, at uh, maybe age 50, hypertrophy. So hypertrophy nodules look like a cancer, you cannot separate. But the important thing is surrounding in the uh, environment, similar vesicle here, uh, perirectal, uh, even lymph node, or external area lymph. Okay, so then, uh, any pelvic uh, mass in the uh, female, you have to think of ovarian tumor, ovarian tumor first. Uterus, tumor, blood, this is blood, tumor, yeah. So what's the origin is difficult. The ovary is over and the tumor is big, it's difficult. But uh, trying to uh, see all three views of MRI, you can tell. Mm -hmm. And fibroid is common, uh, uterine. 
and this uh, staging of ovarian tumor. Usually when we diagnose this stage three, already spread out. The CA1 to 5 is high, is already spread out. Uh, peritonia. It's all uterine, uh, lower uterine segment, cervix, or with the upper vagina, or in It's a uh, <coughs> staging, old staging. Same thing is endometrial tumor is now also common. The endometrial cavity cannot see. So all just uh, hazy all around. Mm. Here, just a mess. Like my own fibroid is huge. So yes, it could be this, uh, the subserosal, could be submucosal, intramural, or depending on location. So you have to mention very where is the uh, adenoma, adenomyomatosis, left mm, ovarian. Thermoid cyst, uh, teratoma is common also in this, as I cited. There's uh, a uh, transplant kidney uh, rejection. Rejection is a vascular problem. And then, uh, okay, this is all dilated uterine vein. Okay, it's, uh, uh, it's a right ilia. Here is a vein, should be here, but the, uh, it's a varices are dilated. Uh, there's a huge bladder diverticulum is connected. So bladder ruptured, the contrast leaking out. And the ureter sealed, dilated the ureter things. And the, uh, uh, the second bladder wall, could be cystitis, it's a similar vesicles here, surgical clips. Mm, there's a bladder, some mass here, bladder transitional, that's a now called urothelial cancer. Uh, that's a, it's a, or, uh, bladder cancer here, here, let's say here, inside the bladder. Uh, so uh, here, ureter is spread. Urothelial tumor is connected to the all the way to the kidney, or the same. It's a prosthetic phlebitis in the vein. Prostate ends again, usually posterior on the T2. Normal peripheral zone is has high signal, so it's tumor is a relatively low signal. <clears throat> yeah, here yeah, you can see. And the uh, tumor ex expand into the surrounding tissue. So it uh, penetrates the capsule and they uh, maybe involve similar vesicles. Okay, here. So. Urethral diverticulum, you can see. In the last uh, few minutes, it's uh, when you deal with the uh, bone uh, lesion, okay, you have to first uh, uh, analyze uh, by the pattern recognition, uh, the uh, margin, sharply marginated is less benign, and then growing, fast growing, more aggressive, certainly. And then uh, geographic pattern is usually uh, 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 suggesting some benign, but the most eaten pattern usually uh, malignant. Permeative is malignant. And, the, uh, 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 and then in the bone, you have to look at is the osteoid matrix or a chondroid matrix. Osteoid matrix is a dense dissimilar to cortex, okay? And then uh, a, uh, uh, another thing is, important thing is age. Is a young age or old age, that's it. And the certain location, 
is the uh, 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 usually around the knee joint, uh, near the metaphysis. And the osteomyelitis is also the same area, but the Ewing sarcoma is in diaphysis, diaphysis. And the uh, Paget disease, I think, is more flat, uh, bone like a pelvis or uh, this. So, uh, uh, but the common benign uh, is island, bone island, and chondroma, hemangioma, things uh, in every place. And so it's a periosteal uh, reaction uh, makes also a difference. Uh, a very aggressive, you just see here is a moth eaten uh, uh, sunburst, something like that. And then a Cartman triangular, triangular shape, that's all malignant. So you can see a uh, vascular channel in the skull is a foramen here. And it's a uh, unusually giant parietal from it as a normal variation. And uh, multiple myeloma show like this, or metastasis. Plasma cytoma is a single uh, lesion. If it's a multiple lesion, it's called multiple myeloma. It's all uh, low density. And the hemangium, well-defined low density lesion here in every place. And the uh, metastasis, the breast cancer metastasis to the skull in 30%. Lung cancer metastasis to the uh, skull in 10%, but they go to brain in 30%. Uh -huh. And the uh, uh, pageant is a pageant typically show a uh, very uh, chaotic or some kind of heterogeneous uh, coarse trabecular pattern, coarse. And so thickening and very irregular. So involving skull, pelvis, and long bones. Every bone, the page involves every bone except for inner, inner Oscar. Fibrous dysplasia is a relatively young age thing. So it's just the dysplasia is a bone is expensive, diffuse. Low and then say like a diffusion mass bone. Uh, it's a fibrous display behavior. Uh, again, uh, on spine, you have to also look at a disc, intermetal disc. <clears throat> that's a thick heart sac and nerve root goes here, here. This is a facet joint, superior inferior articular processes makes a facet joint here. Facet and uh, when the patient complain pain here, this is a uh, area you look for on bone scan. Uh, spinal stenosis uh, is now currently a problem when there's uh, many old people because of uh, aging hypertrophic changes in the uh, bone, whatever bodies, the thicker sac become narrow. narrow. And they usually uh, uh, frontal interpeduncular diameter, usually uh, about two centimeters. So it's less than two centimeter AP diameter. On X uh, <coughs> AP, yeah, that's what you have to suspect. So we see this kind of, and they, Sorry, there's a fancy joint. Sorry, it's fine. Uh, did you cook in the candela? Okay, so this uh, uh, is a Okay, this uh, our discitis uh, of a tabaritis, this uh, disc bulging. See so terminology, protrusion, extrusion, uh, this are all confusing. Okay, migration, things like that. Okay, so uh, here's a disc space here, uh, uh, herniation. You see here, central herniation. Uh, this uh, nerve root is narrowed, this central. So it's a little 
otherwise a little bulging herniation. Let's see here, it's a lateral here. Oh, this is a classical typical hemangioma, speckled density. Yeah, yes. Uh, this one is uh, uh, amyloid. This is brown tumor, low dense hyperparathyroidism, bone metastasis. Okay, this uh, uh, bony island. See density. This uh, is the same as cortex here. It's a bony island, uh, and can this. Uh, yeah, uh, osteoma, see, uh, osteoma here, here, it's a pain and then fractures, so you don't, it's old. Yeah, uh, Ankylosing spondylitis, all the things also, so paget as I mentioned. Okay, I, I have to maybe stop. The shoulder, all this dislocation, post dislocation has, so MRI can do all this uh, detail and supraspinatus uh, rupture that's a uh, common for uh, frozen shoulder things. And then all the rotator cup and the uh, osteonecrosis, the uh, collapse, the hip. The, the MRI is the best for uh, accepting necrosis. And this, uh, this uh, knee joint or meniscus tearing things, uh, MR can show this kind of nicely. And so all sarcomas, all the old so precise description important. Chondrosarcoma, chondroid complex. It's not the cortical, but it's a uh, increased density. And chondroma is common, really irregular uh, density, but it's a benign. It's a, uh, okay, abscess, all this uh, food. Uh, it's an anatomical landmark uh, you have to probably know. And they, we have to learn from all uh, past yesterday, but live for today and hope for tomorrow. All right, thank you so much. Uh, if there's any question, uh, you can uh, send me by email and then I'll try to answer for you. Okay, please keep safe and I will see you uh, in a month for another talk. Thank you.